Hey everybody, welcome back to an episode of The Herbalist Path. It's been a while since I have done an interview on this show and I am beyond excited about today's guest. He's Mason Hutchison from Herb Rally. He is a stellar dude that I have known for many years throughout the herbal industry. He's somebody that always made me smile when I saw him at big old business events and expos with my herbal products company because he was the face of Mountain Rose Herbs. A jolly face at that. And he's just brilliant <laughs> and doing amazing things for the herbal world. And he's a dad who uses herbs with his kids. So I thought it would be really fun to bring Mason on the show. Mason, thank you for being here. I'm so happy. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're also fellow Libra buddies as well. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got that going on, too. I remember <laughs> knowing that for sure. It is the season. Yeah. That's super exciting. You are like, I want to say the 15th or something. I'm the 19th and uh, you're the 14th. I'm the eighth. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we're both so off, but we know we're charming Libras. So that's it's it's that's been a way. while, but yes, uh, I do remember that, and we would uh, commiserate over that. Quite yeah, a bit. absolutely. You're always like one of my favorite people to connect with, and same. Uh, such a such a good time to have you on the show, <laughs> and I figured right. I. I'm really curious. I know you are well connected in the herbal world. You run Herb Rally, the podcast and the YouTube channel, and you interview and meet incredible herbalists all over the country, which is super fun and cool. But I want to know how you got started in the world of herbalism and plant medicine. Yeah. So have I ever told you this story before? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think know. I know. I don't, yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> so I was a very, I would actually say a pretty conventional kid. Um, I was really into basketball and, uh, uh, pretty mainstream stuff. Yeah. You too. All right, cool. You're a baller. <laughs> I'm a baller. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, and you know, it was about when I was 18, when I started slowly be, I grew up in Oregon. I slowly started becoming a, 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 a hippie. Um, and it, they make those in Oregon. <laughs> they really do. They make them the best there. And, um, uh, I've always, uh, been really into, uh, sports and then weightlifting and stuff like that. And then kind of a natural offshoot of that is nutrition, um, so I was really focused, focused on, on weightlifting. And, um, also part of my story is I've always, uh, been kind of, kind of depressed to be honest. And I, and I learned that what you put in your body is actually beneficial to how your mind feels. So it was just kind of like this perfect storm of, uh, weightlifting sports and then nutrition, and then slowly, but surely, uh, the nutrition kind of, uh, um, went into herbalism. So, um, when I first started learning about herbalism, what really appealed to me was like the adaptogenic and tonic traditional Chinese medicine herbs. Um, so I just devoured that content and then kind of the rest is history. I, it's been essentially my life's purpose ever since then. I love that. I love how you got into it with nutrition and like looking at that whole mind body connection. I think that's something that I find a lot of people are a bit misconstrued in because they come to me or probably to you as well. Like what herb do I take for this problem? Cause we're taught that in Western medicine, right? But the reality is we are whole beings and those herbs can't do all the things like Western medicine and pills do, you have to incorporate healthy nutrition and exercise and other solutions for our mental health, right? So whether that's meditation or, or yoga or however you get that brain piece, it's all a big picture thing. And I know that <clears throat> I, I just spoke this to some of my students in Apothecary Mama, like on Wednesday night, I was like, <laughs> the food, like you can't be a good herbalist without understanding nutrition as well. It goes all together because the herbs aren't going to work if you continue to throw more logs on the fire <laughs> of your inflammation, right? I love that. That's yeah. really cool. 
in fact, yeah, I feel like most of the herbalists I know are almost playing this dietitian role, uh, which once I developed that passion for herbalism, I actually thought that I was going to be a, a dietitian. That was my goal. Uh, I would say right around I was I was 21. I started working at the hospital. I worked in the hospital kitchen. Uh, and then it was my goal. I, I was started going to Lane Community College and I was on this path to become a yeah i was on this path to becoming a dietitian i was actually a dietitian aide at the at the hospital um and i was like oh I, I had this idealistic vision of changing the way that the hospital sees nutrition um cuz they and certainly then, don't see it <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, rea reality hit but it was actually at the perfect time because that's right when i really developed a passion for herbalism i was like you know, I kind of changed my life's path. That's right when Mountain Rose Herbs moved from uh, 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 Pleasant yeah. Hill over to Eugene. And and all these other circumstances in my life kind of changed. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go the herbal path. Nice. Yeah. That's that's really cool. I went to Lane Community College also. And I nice. played a lot of basketball. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. really cool. The, the And I became a hippie. I for sure did that. <laughs> Um, yeah, that is, that is really great. I'm so grateful that you did go down that herbal path and the ways that you, you share that, like, you're just, you were the face of one of the, of like the hugest sustainable organic herb supplier out there for so long. And you've made so many incredible connections along the way like that. I think that's going to be so joyous. Like your joy, your job was to run around from herb conference to herb conference and talk about herbs all day. Like, I think I remember a few times where I was like, I want your job, Mason. <laughs> like, I want to do what you do. Um, so yeah, I guess I made my own. <laughs> in that you did. You sure. did. So, um, I would love to hear a little bit about what you do with yeah. your business now, because you're no longer with Mountain Rose, but you still do partner with them. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so while I was at Mountain Rose Herbs for maybe five or six years in the evenings and the mornings and whatnot, I would build this website called Herb Rally on the side. Uh, and it all started out as an events board for the herbal community. Um, so as you know, for, for Mountain Rose Herbs, I was their events person. Uh, and one day I was, I was like, there, I want to be able to find different herbalism events that we could potentially like go to or sponsor. Um, and lo and behold, I didn't really find anything that existed like that. There were certain websites that would list the major conferences, but what I really wanted to find was something that was listing like the neighborhood plant walks, um, the, the little like talks at the library about the, you know, the, you know, herbalism and whatnot. So, so I didn't find anything. And then I, for whatever reason, I had this idea. I'm like, I guess I'll just be that person. So, so yeah, I started this little Squarespace website where we started listing all these herbalism events all over the country. Um, and then it kind of just blossomed from there. Uh, we added different elements here and there. We started doing plant monographs, the podcast, and yeah, the rest is history. Did yeah. that answer your question? I mean, it did. And we're going to dive deeper throughout, <laughs> sure. throughout the show for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think more of it will, will come out. I, I love that because I remember seeing you at NUNM and you had the dandelion hoodies and you're like, <laughs> events thing. And I'm like, I want to share my events on there. And then I, I was terrible at follow through. Cause I'm an, I'm an ideas person all day long. Like I got 5 billion ideas and I'm right. not going to complete <laughs> any of them. <laughs> It's a bad habit of mine, but um, working on it for sure. Um, in that time, like I know you went to a few herb schools yourself. Like, can you tell me and my listeners like how that, how those herb schools helped you on your journey and which ones you went to and like what they did for you? Because there are so many different kinds of herb schools. And if anybody yeah. wants to know about other herb schools, Mason's your guy. <laughs> you want to <laughs> check out Herb Rally for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I know you went to a couple. And yeah. Um, so actually, the first thing that I did going back to Lane Community College, uh, I was probably in my early 20s and KP Khalsa was doing the semester long uh, intro to TCM and Ayurveda. And uh, it was just so amazing. I was so hungry for knowledge at that point. But it was it was 
cheap enough and low commitment enough to where I could uh, really like, I don't know, it was it was so um, it was so easy to access. So just like a little bit of advice, you don't have to do the full on hardcore thousands of dollars apprenticeship first thing i would just say dip your toe into like say yeah community college or uh, go on a plant walk here and there um but yeah i would say kp calls intro to ayurveda and tcm was my first bow into the whole uh herbal education realm um then i did start going on plant walks uh, plant walks at mount pisca and eugene um and then i i fell into uh oh yeah right at the same time of uh um uh, getting a job at Mountain Reserves, I saw a pamphlet for the Columbine School of Botanical Studies uh, in the lunchroom. And I was like, that's that's the next step. I want to take a full on apprenticeship. Um, and I definitely recommend if you have the means to be able to do it, a full on apprenticeship is, is definitely a really good route to go. Uh, because beforehand, herbs for me were just strictly cut and sifted dried herbs in jars. Uh, and it wasn't until I took the Columbine School of Botanical Studies that I started learning these plants as like actual living beings with their own energy and everything. So um, it was just a total game changer. I could probably talk a lot about that experience. Um, uh, but then the next apprenticeship that I took was in Portland, Oregon. So I drove a couple hours every couple of weeks to go hang out at the uh, Arcto School of Botanical Medicine. I might be missing one of the words in there, but um, <laughs> uh, that's with Missy Rose and Grady Proctor. Um, it's kind of a similar Western herbalism system as the Columbine school, but I bring it up because a, it was definitely another foundational piece of my herbal education, but then also, um, you know, you go a few years without taking an apprenticeship. Like it was nice to just kind of learn from different teachers, but then also reinforce a lot of the plants that I already knew. So and now actually it's been several years since I've taken that. It's probably been five years. So I'm like, shoot, I need to get on another herbalism apprenticeship. So funny you say that because it's like never ending learning, right? You yeah. all, there's always more to learn about plant medicine or just to refresh that mind of like, oh, I knew that from five years ago, but I never put that into practice or never utilized it. And why don't I do that? You know, I think yeah. that's one of the fascinating things about herbalism. And I wanted to go to Columbine so badly. I looked at it over and over and over and over, but it was too far from where I live. So I didn't, but Grady was one of my first botany teachers as well oh. through the Elderberry School of Botanical Medicine out of Portland. Um, so yeah, he's a super fun teacher and I love Missy and I did get to learn with Howie also through <laughs> my clinical school. So it's really, I think, I think that's one of the beautiful things also is like the more people you can learn from, there's so many different approaches to the world of plant medicine that yeah. you learn different tricks of the trade from all these great people. Um, and it's important to find the people that you jive with too, because like, <clears throat> it's possible to have an herbal educator out there that you just can't stand listening to. <laughs> I've had a few <laughs> and I'm I've sure. had some that are amazing, you know? Um, so those things are, are important for sure. And I know yeah. Columbines, go ahead. Well, I was going to say um, that's where going to herbalism events is really helpful, especially the conferences, because you get a taste of many different herbal teachers and their styles and personalities and stuff like that. But um yeah speaking of conferences did i just see are you still a part of my absolute favorite one ever and ever and ever are you well <laughs> um actually I, I don't know if we're gonna break the news here or not but like uh i'm i'm looking at essentially either handing it off or letting at least take it full time since i moved to wisconsin i'm a little um hesitant uh to want to keep that going um i know everything can be done remotely but um i really want to invest most of my energies into herb rally and i want to make sure that my you know my focus is on that so um yeah i understand I think the, the need to focus I, yeah yeah and it was such an honor and um it's funny i literally because of covid and then the devastating forest uh -huh. fires i was only able to do it that one year uh, but I, I would say that that year was a banger. Uh, we had rising Appalachia out there. Wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much. I was, I needed that year so badly. <laughs> like I got to go without my business and without my child. And I was like, oh, I needed that <laughs> so, so much in so many ways. It was 
so much fun. <laughs> Those oh, late night cabin be, jam be, sessions. <laughs> I might be magic. one and done, but uh, yeah. So if, if if Mel wants to take it over, or someone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm the one to do it, but if Elise asked, I'd be like, Psh, yeah. Um, that's so funny. Well, I, yeah. I'm sorry to like pop that here. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it might come up. It's all good. Okay, cool. I just, I, I didn't even think to ask that pre-show <laughs> chat. Um, I do want to, want to go back a little bit on the nutrition piece, because sure. I think you have some really amazing lessons on frugal, frugal, excuse me, nutrition. <laughs> can do you, are you still doing that? And if you are, yeah. can you tell us about yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So everything with Herb Rally, pretty much I view as like this ongoing evolving project. And, um, you know, after quitting Mountain Rose Herbs or leaving Mountain Rose Herbs, uh, all these ideas just started popping in my head. Well, actually come to think about frugal nutrition has been in my head for years now. And it was another one of the cases of those perfectionism things where I was like, oh, mm. it's got to be this perfection book. paralysis and it's got to be like killer. this perfect book yeah <laughs> yeah uh, before i release it into the world and then um and then amanda and i we just decided to start um and we started with these three modules well let me back up a minute frugal nutrition or we call it the art of frugal nutrition it we call it our ever expanding sliding scale course um where you could register it from anywhere from a hundred dollars and then increments down all the way to free. So anybody could register for it because we thought it was kind of hypocritical or, or whatnot to, to charge money for a course where we're trying to help people save money on food. Um, it's more of a passion project for us than anything. Um, but, but the idea is to um, grow it over time. It currently has four modules. We're about to release our fifth module. And each module is like this different um, subject centered around saving money on food eating nutritiously on a budget um so i mean i could keep going if you want yeah for sure i do i think that's so important especially now as the prices of our food and everything else in life is absolutely skyrocketing and the major cause of most illness and chronic disease and death is due to our diet so <laughs> please yeah. <laughs> tell us more I mean I think it's I think it's amazing and one thing I I know that you do is you bring in other amazing and brilliant teachers and herbal practitioners and that's beautiful because that's giving all of these people as they're exploring this world of natural healing I mean that's giving them access to some incredibly knowledgeable people and really empowering information which Thank you. I, yeah, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where just like Herb Rally, it just lived in my head and and uh it just it had to exist. So eventually we're like, okay, we're gonna do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe over time we could evolve it to be better, but uh, but so far we have uh modules on uh Bev and Claire did the spice apothecary. She's got a whole book on it, so it's kind of an After intro book. to that. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great book. Um uh, Kirsten Shockey does fermentation. Uh, so she does a demo on how to make sauerkraut. Uh, but then she also talks about the benefits of fermented foods. Uh, Giuseppe Spatafora does dumpster diving, which I know is probably a very bizarre topic. Uh, but I've hung out with Giuseppe a lot over the years. And every time he comes to town, we go dumpster diving. <laughs> and, uh, I learned that it's super easy to get free organic produce uh, from him. And I know how to do it in a safe way now. Um, obviously, you don't have to partake if you don't want to, but it's definitely, um, there's a philo philosophical reason as to dumpster dive, but then there's also the whole nutritional aspect as well. And then Jade Alexandra Mace did a, um, a bone broth course. So if you're into um, eating meat and whatnot, uh, there's, there's a whole bone broth course. Uh, or module, I should say. And then we're actually just about to release a module with Shana Lipner Grover uh, hey. called Eat Your Weeds. Um, and basically it's talking about the, the nutritional benefits of, of weedy foods, as well as how to do it and uh, building relationships with farms in your local community. Um, and and I know we were talking before the, the show, like Mason, you know, teaching and stuff like that. I'm going to do a module on nourishing herbal infusions which has been a, um, a, a passion of mine for, you know, since I got into herbalism and 
Uh, we're going to do one with Paul Bergner. We, we have to redo it because we lost all that footage from the Oakland situation. Yeah. But we'll, we'll redo that with Paul Bergner and, uh, um, yeah, just the ideas are endless for this thing. And I'm just excited every quarter or so we release a new module. That's so exciting. And I love how accessible you make it for people. That's really amazing because they're learning from the best of the best, you know, yeah. and I love that you're going to teach too. <laughs> I know that's a sensitive <laughs> subject matter, but that's, yeah. I get it. It's sometimes yeah. hard to allow yourself to be in that space, especially when you, when you know so many brilliant herbalists and, that's right. and that kind of thing. So yeah. um, how exciting that you're going to have Paul there. He's one of the ones that taught me the most about clinical nutrition. Oh, he is just yeah. brilliant. I've tried to ask him to come on the show too. And he's like, no, well, he didn't even <laughs> say no. I don't think he even said no. And I'm like, but wait, Paul, <laughs> hold on. Lily Coy can come join. Like, That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, it would be so much fun. So yeah. I do, you know, I, I talk to a lot of mamas these days and that's kind of sure. my focus is helping more moms use plants as medicine. And one of the things like I was saying that I hear a lot is like, what herb do I take for this? And that's where the nutrition piece comes into play. But you're not a mama. <laughs> you're totally a dude and you I'm a dada. Are, you are a dada and and I love that too because I think one thing I can resonate with and that I've heard from some of my my new mamas and apothecary mamas are like well my husband's not so onto it or he thinks I'm a little cuckoo for wanting to do this stuff and like one of the first times I really got to connect with you was at Brighton Bush when our daughters were playing, um, Mills and Anira were playing. And ever since right. then, I was like, oh, cool. You know, so I'd love to hear just a little bit about your life as a dad and a dad who uses plants as medicine. Yeah, I've got a, a few things to say about this. Um, <clears throat> so. It's interesting. I almost feel as if my goal of being an herbal dad is uh, to have Amelia take this lifestyle almost for granted, which is a weird thing to say. Uh, but I want her to kind of grow up, pursue her own passions, do her own thing, and uh, just kind of have herbalism or, you know, the whole nutritional aspect of it just be like everyday life. Terrific. And then she could pursue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Roots. It's uh, the, 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 you know, I want to pursue her art or, you know, whatever she's really passionate about. Uh, and then just, you know, she uses herbs in the kitchen and whatnot, or herbs for healing and, and whatnot. So I think I've actually done a pretty good job of that. Um, she, uh, Amelia, for, re for the audience's reference, she's 11 now. Um, and yeah, so uh, actually, just the other day, we were, uh, um, we were making herbal chocolate um for this book that's going to be put out by molly meehan uh, it's called the kids herbalism book it's it's going to be super cool but uh but yeah like this is the type of stuff i want to do i want to like show her herbs in the kitchen and make it fun and, and whatnot and um yeah so we just made a we made a goji berry pistachio chocolate and it was super wow. easy super <laughs> delicious and uh you know obviously fun and delicious for her as well um uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, I'd say, t uh, have Amelia take it for granted, but did you have any input on that before I keep rambling? No, I love it. Cause I, 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 I like that perspective of like taking it for granted. Like, yeah, I, I, I think that <laughs> my daughter does a little bit, but now she's watching me like teach these classes. And I think she's starting to be like, Oh, what mm -hmm. my mom's doing is like really Something. she's a superhero yeah <laughs> yeah and like she has obviously been immersed in it as well like she's yeah. got a healing nature about her that little girl yeah. may not know it but like she is full-on healer and and nurturer so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in her life and of course I think like most parents we want to see them well I guess there's parents that really push their kids to like nope you've got to be a doctor you've got to be a lawyer like all that totally junk now I'm all about like what are you into and yeah um <clears throat> so yeah I love the way you you made that as if she like takes it for granted because it is 
It's her roots. It's her life. That's like a given. Duh. Who doesn't use herbs? <laughs> I have <laughs> a strong suspicion she's not going to be a clinical herbalist someday. Uh, you know, it's very possible, but I, I don't think that's going to be her path. Right. That said, at the same token, she loves to cook. And, you know, like being with her in the kitchen is super fun. And, uh, you know, maybe she'll go something with that route. But like, um, I don't, I don't think she needs to pursue herbalism for me to be like proud of her or whatever, you know no. what I mean? Um, yeah. so, you know, on the other hand though, I've always been a bit, big advocate of, um, making her try foods that she doesn't particularly find appetizing at the time, even in small amounts. I don't force her to eat full plates of weird stuff, but I ask her to always try bites. So at this point in her life, she has an extremely accepting palate, um, which is cool, you know, now yeah. we can take her out for various different types of food and she's all about it. She likes trying new stuff. And the other thing on that note, I was going to say is I'm always, you know, earlier I was mentioning herbal infusions. I'm always making herbal infusions, these strong decoctions, and I'll get her like a little, like half glass. I'll be like, take this, you know, it's, it's obviously always like nourishing in nature as opposed to like say medicinal. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, she's always consuming oat straw infusion and whatnot. So yeah, oat straw. That's one of your that's your jam, huh? That's my jam. Those oats. Up. Tell us why. And and if you want to bring Mills into the picture of your your love of oats, please do. Yeah. Uh so oat straw in particular, as opposed to say milky oat tops, oat straw, a strong oat straw infusion is something that I it's, it's kind of like, um, I'd probably say it's my daily tonic of choice. I, I probably consume it four to five days a week. Um, do, do you think your audience knows how to do it, make it, or should I kind of run through? Please tell them. Okay. So quart mason jar or canning jar, and then you throw <laughs> in... <laughs> it's a mason jar all the way. <laughs> um, and I know it's probably blasphemy, but like a lot of people are probably tell you, you have to measure exactly this amount, but I'm more of like the folk method. Uh, so a few tablespoons of dried herb, in this case, oat straw, and then um, pour, you know, fill it with uh, boiling hot water, stir it in, and then you can throw some sort of cap on there if you want. And I always do this at night, and then I just let it infuse overnight. And then in the morning, I use a, I actually use a sprouting screen as opposed to like, you know, a I don't know what people will use cheesecloth or whatever. I just use a sprout screen and I balance it on the wall and I let it just fill the other Mason jar. Um, and then boom, you got your nourishing herbal infusion of uh, oat straw. Um, the reason I like to take it is because I could feel it in my body, how nourishing it is. Uh, I know that it's full of minerals, vitamins, and so on. Uh, the, the, the other thing that I like about it is I don't find it to be either stimulating or, uh, too calming it's like very neutral for me um it also gives it does give me although i said it's not energizing per se like say a caffeine it does give me like this vigor or like this uh strength feeling and i i could i could definitely feel it even though it's kind of like a kind of a neutral herb i, I suppose uh, do you have any thoughts on that i do feel that it's pretty neutral i have a few people yeah. that make it that say they feel really grounded with that herb yes <clears throat> Um, I, I love hearing about how it's so nutritive and my thoughts of that, like why you get that energy is because your body's like, thank you for all that glorious nutrition. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like I need that. <laughs> this is a crucial piece of it all. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on that. As I listen to you talk about it. I, I also love the sprout screen. I think I saw that on one of your YouTubes or something. Um, and I was like, genius <laughs> like yeah. that is straight brilliant yeah. uh, I never thought of that and I still haven't ever gotten myself one but that's just do it <laughs> well, I, I do like I've got some I've got so many different apparatus right. or tea straining Forest. at this moment in life yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I, I know somebody was like sending me oh it was a I got this mug as a gift from my brother from a clay artist out of Eugene because my brother lives in Junction City, actually. Um, and they got me this cool mug many years back for Christmas. And in 2016, I did an Instagram photo of me with the mug and I was all stoked with it. And this woman just like two weeks ago was like, oh, I'm so glad to see this picture. And it was the artist. <laughs> and I'm 
like, wow, six years later. <laughs> awesome. I was like, that's one of my favorite mugs. I lost the <laughs> insert to it. She's like, oh, really? Like, I can send you another. And I'm like, the last thing I need right now is more things to infuse tea with. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I declined the offer, but I would sure. definitely love to share people, share with people her work because it was amazing. Um but the sprout screen thing still, I mean, that's going to be really helpful when you're infusing herbal oils or if you just don't want the mess of cheesecloth all over the place. And yeah, nice. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's a little hack that I claim to have made up, but I'm sure a million other people thought about it. But yeah, every morning you'll see like on our kitchen wall, like the two mason jars perfectly balanced while the liquid is straining. I'm sure with like, say a, a cheesecloth or whatever, you could squeeze more of the nutritional goodness out. But I just... You, you can know, give an extra so, press in the end. Yeah, you know? It's so convenient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Convenience so. can be really a big piece to all of this. So I'm like, oh, wait, I had other questions on oats and I want to hear you talk more about oats. Um, but convenience yeah. is a big thing, especially when you're a parent because uh, life's busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, So yeah. the more we can make things really simple and easy, the better off we are. Right. Yeah. Um, I totally want to hear you talk about oats more, but before we do, would you be cool with explaining to the audience about oats? Cause maybe they're thinking they're just eating a pot of oatmeal. Yeah, actually. Um, so for Rosalie's podcast, I did this 30 day challenge, uh, where for 30 straight days, I did, a um, oat straw infusion, uh, oat top extract, uh, oatmeal. And then I did a Robin Rose Bennett's, uh, oat, a Venus sativa oat straw meditation. <laughs> so none of that's required, but I will say yeah, like <laughs> the different um, plant parts are going to have the different constituents and effects. So uh, as I mentioned, I've, I've not always, but for the longest time I've done oat straw infusion, uh, but it was really nice and actually oatmeal too. Uh, so this obviously. is all the same plant, right? It's all, yeah, exactly. So it's all a Venus sativa. Uh, my understanding is oatmeal is like the the dried and pressed seed head or ripe seed head. I'm probably butchering that. I don't either way. And then the oat straw is like the dried grassy aerial parts. Uh, but the oat top is like the um, unripe uh, seed head. And it's got like this milky latex substance in, in there. Um, and that's where like these calming nervine properties are. And that's where like the real magic is like, it was fun to do. I bring up the 30 day challenge because it was fun to experiment with these different parts and like feel these effects. Um, and so, and so working at mountain reserves, I always had access to these different tinctures and whatnot. And I would take oat top extract here and there. Uh, but I didn't take it tonically over the course of a, you know, a period of time. So, so I know it was really beneficial for my nerves to be taking these, uh, uh, this, oat top extract um also i don't know if everyone resonates with oatmeal um but like i know my body does i've eaten it since i was a kid so that was like nothing foreign to me but um so yeah um yeah you got your different parts and I, it was fun to like holistically include all of that into my diet and nervous system I heard that interview on Rosalie's oh. podcast and I love that you did that. Um, and I want to just take a moment because I'm, I'm teaching a lot of moms that are kind of new to the world of herbalism, which is great. And what I love that you did here was a full 30 day deep dive with one herb. Yeah. And I'd love to hear if you have thoughts or anything on that. Um. I love that idea. Um, and I think it's really important to feel the physiological effects that one plant might have on your body. It's really interesting to go from say an oat straw infusion to a nettle infusion. So for me, I keep telling people this, I'm like, if I take, oat, or I'm sorry, nettle infusion too late in the evening, I will have genuine insomnia. Like I won't be able to sleep. I'll be so energized from that. And there's something about that plant that just keeps me up. 
Um, and it's hard to explain at this point. Maybe it's just, I've psyched myself up to think that's true, but no, energetically, it feels genuinely way too stimulating for me. So, um, I think it's important to work with just one planet at a time, just so you can really feel that like, like another one of my favorite nourishing herbal infusions is say like raspberry leaf. It's also nutritive, but then it's got like that astringent quality to it as well. Uh, just energetically, it feels different. So um, I think if you want to start learning about plants, in addition to consuming just that one planet at a time, as opposed to making it in some sort of formula, it's also good to like, just read about it, you know, mm -hmm. read about that one plant, read about it from different teachers, uh, different, you know, YouTube videos, whatever, and, and just kind of really get this holistic picture of this one particular plant. And then you'll just really start to get to know it intimately. Mm hmm. I think that intimate relationship with a plant, like it's a, it's a real thing. Like yeah. I know I have a few plants where I, I built that intimate relationship and now I can set that plant aside and not use it for a long time. And I might see just a tincture bottle of it or just it on my shelf in a jar. And I can, I don't know if I'm just crazy, but I can absolutely feel that plant and its energy and effects on my body. And yeah. that is amazing. <laughs> like, I'm like, is this real? No, I, I feel this. <laughs> this is really real. Ashwagandha is one of those for me. Cool. Um, and it's, it's an herb that has been very, very important to me, especially through quite a bit of my business life <laughs> with my herbal <laughs> products line. Like I needed Good that ally. stuff. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and, and I could tell when I didn't take it back in those days, cause I'd be I would not be able to handle stress as well. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, look at me breaking down crying. Oh, I haven't taken ashwagandha in a few weeks. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I should take some of that. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so um, you sound, you look like you got that face of I'm going to say something. I also, part of that, I think it's important to like listen to what you're drawn to. And I'm thinking back on my Columbine's days. It's really interesting to think about the plants that I was drawn to versus like, you know, Howie or Steven would ask about this or that plant. I'd be like, I can't remember anything about that plant, you know, uh, but certain plants just really drew me in. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't have an explanation for it, but for whatever reason, we're all drawn to these particular plants. Um, so yeah, it's one thing to like um, go in depth on one particular plant at a time, but I also think it's a good idea to uh, really just listen to what's drawing you in and then to go deep on those plants. Absolutely. That's what reminded me about the ashwagandha. Yeah. If you listen, they will teach you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Like, yeah, that, that's a, that's a great perspective because they do call you in interesting ways. And I think the, the first time I personally ever experienced that was after my first Brighton Bush herbal conference, I <laughs> went on an herb walk with Cascade and I went on an herb walk with Jane Bothwell. <clears throat> and I think it was Jane actually who was like the herbs and the plants will, will talk to you when you need them I'm like sure okay hippie whatever <laughs> <laughs> like, it was my first herb conference I didn't really know anybody or anything there um and I'd been like studying and taking books and I did an online course and whatever and I just kind of went on a whim and I'm so grateful I did because it was at that moment that I was like boom, these are my people. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. This is my life. And I dove really deep. Right. Um, but anyways, like right after that, I had bronchitis for my first time ever. And it was November after that conference. And I was stuck inside for like three weeks and I'm an outdoors girl. Like I cannot hang without going to hug a tree. And, and I remember just going nuts. And I'm like, Chris, I gotta, I gotta get out of the house. And I was like, I'm gonna go for a walk on Salmon River, the same place I was today. And it's like one of my favorite places on the planet. And I couldn't walk for crap. Like I would walk 10 steps and I would just hack my lungs out and I couldn't breathe. And like, I was still really sick. And every time I would stop, I would look down at my feet and there would be lungwort, which I had just learned about also at Brighton Bush. And I'm like, oh, hack, 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 cough, cough, cough. I'm going to try walking more. La -di -da -di -da. 10 more steps doing the same thing. Oh, look, there's lungwort at my feet. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I must've done this like 10 times before I was like, 
maybe this stuff is talking to me. <laughs> like maybe <laughs> I should take this home. And and I took a little bit home. And that was my first time trying lung war. And I made a little tea of it. And it was my first time I could take a full breath in over three weeks. And I mean, wow. if that wasn't talking to me, <laughs> I don't know what was. It's just so cool the way that kind of stuff happens. And if you open up your your mind and your soul to listen, it's powerful. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It's one of my, my favorite little stories where I was like, oh, these guys, they really know what's going on. It's it's pretty beautiful. I call that like a gateway herb. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, you were going to say something also on the oat top or yeah. oats in general and milts. I'm going to draw oh. you back to that. Oh, uh, I don't recall exactly what it was, but I, I do know that every time I make like a nourishing herbal infusion, I, I pour a little bit for her and I give it to her and I force her to drink it. <laughs> At this point, it's just become like a very normal part of her life. So yeah, yeah my kiddo, <laughs> was that it? Maybe, yeah. maybe, I don't know. My kiddo yeah. definitely asks for teas. Like we don't really do soda or anything like that in our home. So she drinks a lot of teas and she has her favorite and the herb that like she's been connected with deeply for so long is chamomile. And it's Oh, I'm glad you say one. that. Because one of the, I knew we were going to talk today. And I was like trying to think of, you know, different aspects to being an herbal dad and stuff. Yeah. And, Amelia every night makes chamomile tea. So mm. it's it's a it's a great uh herb for kiddos. Yeah. yeah. They love it. Yeah. What do you love about it for kiddos? Or what does she love about it? Well, um for me specifically, I remember one time I had this just crazy stomach ache, just like this. I don't know, it was it was super painful. And it was one of those times where um I'm probably gonna miscredit the quote, but um I think it was Jim McDonald said something like gentle does not mean weak or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And I think of like chamomile as one of those um, gentle herbs. And I, I remember I was in the mountain rose herbs marketing office and I had this gnarly stomach ache and I took like two drops of chamomile tincture and it just was like, I'm fine now. It was a very bizarre. Uh, it, it's always funny. I'm in this herbal world and yet I still get surprised by these little things that happen. And mm. uh um, it was a, it was a super cool experience. Uh, but as far as Amelia taking it or uh, for Mills taking it, but she, um, she takes it at night because, you know, it's kind of just known as like this gentle nervine and, um, I don't know, she finds the, the, the flavor to be delightful and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's got that aromatic and sweetness floral mm -hmm. flavor to it. And, uh, yeah, just good, good little pre pre bedtime drink. Yeah. It's an amazing one. And Nira definitely has a connection to it. And like, since she was wee little, she would come up to my cups of tea and I always had loose leaf tea and she would just pick out little chamomile flowers and eat them. And it's such <laughs> a perfect herb for her still to this day, because she's, she's very shy and reserved and definitely deals with anxiety. And each time she goes into an anxious moment, immediately she says, my tummy hurts. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we've got the nerving there. And then we've got the ability for it to help with your tummy ache too. Like it's perfect. And now we've gotten it to the point that she goes through that. And I can say, do you need me to make you a cup of tea? Yeah. And instantly she calms down before I've hot heated the water, wow. before yeah. I've made the tea, anything. She knows there's safety in that herb and neat that's know? really like, cool that's yeah, really cool it really that, is that reminds me of like when even when i just think of a spicy food my mouth immediately starts to salivate she's like she's already knows is coming so she just gets calm immediately um uh amelia also loves this tea from mountain rose herbs called berry bramble have you have you had that one mm -mm. oh so good um but yeah so she'll drink like the berry bramble during the day and then at night she'll have the chamomile tea. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. so cute. They're such yeah. lucky kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they get immersed in this. I didn't have that as a kid. Like I'm, I'm the black sheep of my family, and I'm, I'm the one. My, my family's a bunch of hippies, but they were never herbal hippies. <laughs> they yeah. were a whole different ballgame of hippies. So, um, they didn't know about this stuff, and I'm the one that teaches them all that kind of stuff. So 
much like Amelia, like me wanting her to take this herbal lifestyle for granted. I also like another one of my mantras is I, I just want to be jealous of Amelia's childhood. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's what most of us as parents want. Like hundred percent, you know, <laughs> mine will complain about it. And I'm like, kid, you live on a beautiful yeah. mountain river and you can right. walk your dogs down your own Paradise. private trail every single day. And like, sure i always want to do better as a parent and i think we sure. you know we put that pressure on ourselves but yeah. also like where's the gratitude and what we do have i think that's a really important piece of it all it's easy to forget though because yeah. this parenting it stuff is. ain't easy <laughs> you know is it yeah <laughs> I, I don't think so i don't think it is <laughs> if you do please tell me more of your secrets mason please there is no, such... it's a every day is a new learning lesson yeah, in life, yeah. all around. That's there right. was something that I've, I've got like this question that was from something you were saying and now I've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. It was, it was about these herbs and I'm just going to have to skip to, to a different <laughs> thing until it comes You'll around. You'll remember later. I know, after our call. Yeah, wow. exactly. <laughs> Mason's in bed. I better text him. What's the answer? <laughs> Um, yeah. So in all of your, your time, like sharing all these herbal events, going to herbal events with the best teachers, recording all of these conferences, I'm about to ask you a next to impossible question. <laughs> uh -oh. Who is one of the most impactful teachers for you in the world of plant medicine? And maybe you already answered this. Um, and why? Mm -hmm. Um, I have to go with Howie Brownstein. He's, I, I call him like my OG mentor. I, I would say Steven Yeager too, but he's too, um, I don't know. <laughs> we hang out too much. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you guys are like homies. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'm homies with Howie too, but yeah, like Columbine's that school completely changed my life, um, uh, in so many ways. So yeah, I would say Howie Brownstein, um, just again, like surely because he, he introduced me to the whole idea of, uh, well, botany, mm -hmm. botany, like looking at tiny little flowers through loops, um, ends up becoming like this really, uh, crazy experience that I never thought I would have with herbalism, you know? Um, and then, you know, I got to go with Rosemary Gladstar as well. Just, um, she's an OG and she's taught me so much and I've had the fortune of taking classes with her in person. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, she has just this way of making uh, a lot of this complex herbal knowledge, you know, super simple. She makes it fun. And then she's just like, obviously this delight to be around. Um, so I never really thought about it in that way, but yeah, I would say uh, Rosemary's been the most, uh, one of the most impactful along with Howie. Yeah. Those are, I've, I've also had the fortune of learning from both of them a little bit. I really wanted to do the deeper dive and going to like Howie's full school, but he taught at my clinical school in Portland too. So I got pieces of Howie and in other like conferences and I've had the great fortune of being in Rosemary's presence too. And she's just such a lovely human, <laughs> such, such an amazing person. Like, I just feel like this floating butterfly fairy goddess of herbalism <laughs> energy around her. And how can you not love her, you know, yeah. and what important and powerful work she's done. She founded Mountain Rose Herb. She founded Traditional Roots. Yeah. She uses her voice for the betterment of the plants which yeah. in turn is the betterment of the planet so yeah she's she's amazing what an um, amazing human. but 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 thank you you're right you did ask an impossible question i know um, it is I, a hard one <laughs> i just left out 200 different people uh but so if you're one of those good. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I bet you those people know that's an impossible question too. That's like the other question I love to ask of like, what's your favorite herb? If you yeah. could pick one, what's it going to be? <laughs> so I'll toss that on you. Maybe you've already talked about it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, oats? what my favorite herb is? Oh, yeah. Okay. If you could um, only have one. 
Uh, it would have to be oats or okay. oat straw, yeah, because of the vers versatility. Uh, but just some other ones that I really resonate with and feel feel really good about is, well, it's not herb, I suppose, but reishi mushroom is, is up there. Um, I love hawthorn. I love everything mm -hmm. about hawthorn. I love linden. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think of linden, this is another yeah. one of those relationship herbs that I have. I, I use hawthorn on a regular basis too. But when I think of linden, I just like... I've gotten to this point where I can think of it and I feel like the branches of the tree wrapping around my body and hugging me in this loving embrace to say, it's okay, Mel, whatever you're going through is okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what comes that. to me for Lyndon. And yeah, it, it makes me happy. <laughs> does, does part of you feel like Lyndon is almost underrated? I, I don't, I just don't feel like that many people talk about it or, uh, there's something about it though that i absolutely love i think the flavor is delicious oh yeah um, but yes the, the presence of the tree itself too is really lovely too but yeah yeah i would say now that you put it that way but then this this brings me to a bit of a maybe an only in my head a controversial kind of thing in the like the underratedness and then when it does become popular and people suddenly <laughs> discover that like oh this is really great medicine yeah. and then this is something that breaks my heart often and this is words i've learned from cascade and from rosemary i think some of the messaging they were trying to get out there is like we learn about these things and then as a greedy culture that we are in, we go out and rape and pillage the land. And I talked about this with Jim McDonald on my show too. Like right now with social media, the glorifying of going out and wild crafting and wild harvesting, it's a beautiful gift to be able to do, but as more and more people do it and they do it without education and knowledge behind them, one, I'm seeing people harvest tons of a plant and going on social media and saying, I just harvested all of XYZ plant. What do I do with it? Okay, one, <laughs> you harvested all this stuff you don't know, and it's not the plant they're talking about. Like, how do we address that kind of thing as we talk about like underrated herbs and then mm -hmm. when they do become the star of the show like I feel like I don't know maybe you can relate to this but right now the star of the show in the world I'm seeing is oregano oh huh. yeah but. I, I don't I haven't seen that but I will say at the at the very least um from what I know I feel like Lyndon at least is pretty ubiquitous I, right. I like it's not like a crazy you know old growth forest plant that is in danger maybe it is i, I don't think it is but i, I think um, it's good <laughs> but, yeah i think it, i think it's good so yeah there's that aspect of the whole uh thing but um um going back to like howie's teachings and everything he teaches people how to wildcraft which could be problematic especially you know in the social media age and everything and making glorifying these particular herbs and whatnot but what his school does is teaches you how to harvest everyone says ethically harvested and whatnot but he really does teach you um what's his quote it's um oh my gosh i'm gonna butcher this it's something like uh the hard part is isn't harvesting the hard part is not harvesting the plant mm, like just, yeah or something something to that effect but um he teaches you how to wild harvest in a very ethical way. And he's, he, he teaches you when not to harvest because you're, you know, you're watching these plant stands over the course of years. He's teaching you which plants, you know, almost benefit say from the wild harvesting. Uh, but yes, it is important to know, to understand um, what you're doing to these different ecosystems. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think that's the big, big key point. And I was really fortunate to be taught about wild harvesting. I went through elderberry school, botanical medicine, and I learned with Scott Close and, um, and Erico as well. And it was really cool to like, just understand the, the ecosystem and how we are impacting it. And um, yeah, it's just kind of one of the things I like to, to talk about a lot because it is such a very glorified and popular thing. And I think it's brilliant the way that Howie teaches the ethics and the, the standards and how to respect the land and respect the plants and respect yourself in turn. 
I, I think that is beautiful and I think it's really important. And I think as the popularity of holistic health and herbal medicine and wild crafting continues to grow, go, grow, it needs to be talked about more. It needs to be brought up. Not just, I went out and harvested this, but like, I think one cool thing that Jim talked about when I interviewed him was... <clears throat> Now, as it grows in popularity, like at first we were taught, oh, you know, this stand of this plant, you've been there for years, you know, when's the right time to harvest it and you can go there and you can gather a quarter of that stand. But right. now that it's becoming so popular, your buddy's going to go and grab that quarter of a stand and then his buddy is going to go grab that quarter of a stand. And so then what are we left with? Right. <laughs> it's, um, it's a just challenge. Just just to plug uh, Howie and the Columbine School of Botanical Studies, his website's botanicalstudies.net. Uh, but I really want to point you in that direction because he has something called the Wild Crafting Checklist. Um, and I, I want to say it's like 20 bullet points. So you read these and you you know, you familiarize yourself with these 20 different bullet points or, or whatever the number is before you actually even harvest the plant. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a really good guide to if you're out in the woods and you want to harvest this thing. You should go over this wild crafting checklist and just see if like you feel good about harvesting the plant. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that checklist. It's great. And I, I appreciate that plug. That's that's awesome. I'll try and remember yeah. to put Howie's wild crafting checklist into <laughs> the show notes. Yeah. Um, write myself a note on that. So I know I've had you on the line for a long time. So I do want to <laughs> have a few other questions for you. Sure. Um, not too many, but if you, so from Herb Dada, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be my new domain name. Herb yeah, Dada. <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's another great niche there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you're going to have a harder time finding the audience though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so from your really well experienced, what can you give us like just a few herbs that you think are essential to have in a home to take mm -hmm. care of your kiddos with? Oof. Um, I, God, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I, I genuinely think like the nourishing herbal infusions are going to be the way to go. Um, I'm not so good at the whole, uh, you know, herbal first aid thing. There's definitely other better herbalists to talk to about that. Um, but just, yeah, off the tip of my tongue, chamomile, you know, mm -hmm. again, for those like tummy aches, but also just the whole, the calming aspect of it. But yeah, oat straw, um, like I said, me and Amelia are just, we like cooking together. So yeah, any sort of the culinary herbs, um, I think, um, Which are darn good medicine. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like you were mentioning oregano and everything. I, I think putting a strong emphasis on if you could include them in the kitchen as much, much as possible. I know it's easier to just do yourself. Um, but if you could start like, you know, one time a week, two times a week asking for help, even if it's just a minor amount, um, getting your kid in the kitchen and, and like involved in the process, I think that's going to pay off dividends and, and, and your relationship with your kid as well as like their own life after they leave the house. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> Again, broken record, oat straw, chamomile. These are just all top of mind. I'm sure I'll probably think of some after the call. But yeah, just putting a strong emphasis on the whole culinary aspect of it, um, including yeah, all those like aromatic mints that you, you use in the kitchen, the rosemary, the oregano, thyme, all that good stuff. So Heck yeah, they're all such good yeah. medicine too. I mean, they, they, yeah. they've got a lot going on. I love them for that. That's yeah. great. I love it. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to touch on is that we didn't even scratch the surface as to what you offer at Herb Rally. And mm. I would love to hear more about your membership where I think you bring in even more amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. So people have that opportunity to learn from so many other herbalists, which again is just brilliant. <laughs> like I feel so grateful that my herbal education comes from a wide array of herbalists and I feel like that's the best way to get into it. So I would love to, to have you tell our listeners about what you got going on. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned, herbal is just like this ever expanding project. Uh, um, 
it, it comes down to first the herbalism events. We every day I'm adding new events to the list. That's both in person, that's virtual, um, and then we also uh, segment it by state. So. Granted, not every state has herbalism events happening, but it's my goal to make sure I find out about it if they are. Uh, you could search by state. You could search chronologically what's happening in your neck of the woods, as we like to say. Um, Herb Rally is also a podcast. We recently became a daily podcast. Uh, so we release new episodes each and every day, although I just announced that we're going to go down to five days a week. I was like, oh, I saw that and I was like, <laughs> holy crap, <laughs> you are busy. <laughs> yeah. So that. we're going to do um, Monday through Friday and we're still going to call it a daily podcast because that counts. Um, we have a YouTube channel. We release new videos uh, every week. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, we have the Herb Rally Schoolhouse, which is our membership area. It's $10 a month. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so we just bring in different teachers from around the community to teach these various classes. It's still relatively new. I think we're up to about 25 classes, uh, and it's just growing every week. Um, it's it's something I'm probably the most excited for. Uh, what else do we do? Oh, yeah, we have herbal monographs, which if your audience doesn't know what a monograph is, basically it's just like this uh, lengthy description of what a plant is and what it, what its history is. It's, uh, you know, it's range where it grows, uh, what it's used for and so on. Uh, I really always resonated with the monographs, uh, that had kind of story and personal experience involved. So we try to have the monographs be kind of, you know, have like the basic info, but then also have like that herbalist, the, the herbalist that wrote it, uh, their particular experience with it. So, Shoot. Oh, and the art of frugal nutrition, of course. So um, that's probably about it. Uh, I could probably talk about all those things for a very long time. <laughs> and you're going uh, to because that's what yeah. you do. Yeah, I that's think right. that's beautiful. <laughs> it's offering up yeah. so much opportunity for so many people. So yeah. thank you for the work of that course. you do. I think it's amazing. So Herb Rally is on YouTube. You're on Instagram. Yeah. You're on the Facebook I would we're on facebook so. instagram we technically have a tiktok we only have two videos <laughs> me and tiktok it's crazy you're killing it <laughs> Dude, it's, and that that platform it's it's insane and the crazy yeah. thing is like there's no like there's no real strategy for tiktok mm -hmm. you just go on and you talk you're and a you natural tick. yeah <laughs> <laughs> <You tick. laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, right there. Did you just make that up? I just made that up. That's right there. <laughs> That's Woody Mel coming out. It happens. That's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting platform to be on. But the schoolhouse is is really cool. I think I know a few of the teachers that you have on there. I know Missy's there who sure. runs the Arcto School. She was my first interview on the Herbalist Path. By the no way, way. Yeah. you know what else uh so maybe maybe missy's become the new rosemary because she was the first person in the schoolhouse too nice <laughs> who else is in there uh who else we got shoot uh logan keister christina sanchez um shoot should i look up the uh, uh g ling lin um oh my gosh uh kyle denton uh, Elise and Jeff Higley. I'm going to leave so many people out. I think we currently have around 12 teachers. Oh, uh, Kelsey Barrett, uh, Dana Aronson. Um, yeah, these are all just over the course of time. I've developed these friendships with these people and they're, they're, they're all really cool herbalists, but they're all buddies. And, um, that's the, that's the goal. So that's me and Amanda's new lifestyle, Amanda for the audience. She's, she's my wife and she's also the co-owner of Herb Rally. Uh, and, and that's our plan is to, uh, half the year travel around in an RV and just uh, hang out with these different herbalists around the country and produce uh, just lots of different classes. I love that so much. And I have to just give a big shout out to Amanda, your <laughs> wife. I've yeah. never met her yet. I don't think, Soon. Um, but I just have to say how amazing it is to watch how she's brought Mason out <laughs> of his shell and just helped you be able to shine a little bit more from the outside perspective. I know it's not easy to allow yourself to shine, <laughs> but you deserve to. And I see how she's really helped that happen. And I think it's so cute, number one, and <laughs> wonderful and brilliant. And I love it. So, um, She's been very instrumental in getting me out of my shell. Absolutely. Um, 
It's She's crazy. like, hey, you got so much to offer. <laughs> I'm going to help you offer it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's crazy what uh, an onslaught of compliments and everything can do for one's confidence, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. It's, it's bonkers. I'm so excited that that's happened. And I'm so excited about what you're doing at Herb Rally, what you're doing with Schoolhouse, what are you doing with the art of you? frugal nutrition and what you're doing for the entire world of herbalism and plant medicine like thank you mel yeah thank you like what a great resource especially for my listeners like a lot of them want to go on plant walks they want to know their neighborhood herbs and they should right but I can't teach that to them because I'm in Oregon and they're in South Carolina or wherever you know um so they can definitely go to herb rally find other herbalists that are teaching plant walks or taking them on that journey in their neighborhood and know that because you know all of the herbalists like you you are like the guy right (laughs) um to know that when you have a teacher on your platform that it is the best and what a crazy steal of a deal that schoolhouse is thank you yeah uh yeah um Agreed. Yeah, I, I feel like all the herbalists that are on the website, they've been vetted at least by me. Uh, mm-hmm. But I will say for your listeners sake, if they do want to go on a plant walk, and they want to hopefully find something in their area, they could go to herbrally.com slash events. Um, and then if they want to take a step further, there is a drop down menu to select by state. Uh, or you could just do herbrally.com slash events slash and then type in their state and they, they could hopefully find something. Uh, again, like man, it's been so exciting. Uh, there, I, I, I know of two new herbalists in West Virginia, um, and they've been submitting events. And historically, we never had herbalism events in West Virginia, but now there's events in West Virginia. So, so yeah, like your mission, Mel, is the same as like you want to put uh, herbalists in every household. Uh, that's the goal. We want to get these people out in the community and learning the plants in their area, uh, and that's that's how we're trying to help out with the um, with the same mission. So, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Mason. You're somebody that I could talk with for like, (laughs) not hours, but like months long. And just blah, 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 blah. Wait, are we (laughs) done? (laughs) No, we aren't. I'm like, I bet your wife's like, can you come eat dinner or something? (laughs) And my family's like, I made the banana bread. We have to go to this party. Um, But yeah, you're always somebody that I'm always so excited to see and and to chat with but usually it's at events and you're so busy or i'm so busy or we're both so busy and i'm like hey dude you're fine and cool <laughs> i should talk to you sometime or or it's at a concert and <laughs> that was good to, awesome. yeah to finally like get my get chris to meet you because for years i've been like you gotta meet mason you're gonna really gonna like him like that was then, cool yeah and then he was like i do like him and now he's moving to wisconsin (laughs) like three days later or something so it's super funny but you know we got ties in wisconsin too so that's right yeah awesome mason thank you so much i will definitely be sure to link to uh, herbrally.com forward slash events and then they can (laughs) take themselves to their own to own states (laughs) that's right Thanks for having me, Mel. Thank you. Have a beautiful evening. You too. (laughs) Bye.